Hello everyone. In this video of the shoulder complex palpation series, we are going to learn practically the palpatory skills that are required to accurately localize the sternoclavicular joint. Learning and improving this palpatory skill is going to help both the physiotherapy students as well as the young practitioners to improve their examination as well as the treatment strategies specific to the sternoclavicular joint. So to palpate the sternoclavicular joint, the first thing that the therapist needs to do is to start with the palpation of the sternocleidomastoid muscle as this is going to serve as the landmark for accurately determining the sternoclavicular joint space. So for this, to palpate the sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid, what we are going to do is we are going to ask the patient to turn the head and neck on the opposite side that is if we are palpating the right sided sternoclavicular joint so we have to ask the patient to turn the head and neck to the left side so as you can appreciate here what this has done is the sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid has become more prominent another thing that should be noted is that the insertion point of the sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid is directly medial to the sternoclavicular joint space so this actually makes our palpation very easy for the sternoclavicular joint so now the therapist needs to follow the lateral part of this sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid so this tendon like cord needs to be followed from the lateral direction so with the fingers pointing medially the therapist is going to keep following this tendon like cord of the sternocleidomastoid muscle until the tip or pad of the finger comes in contact with the hard bony surface which is actually the superior portion of the medial end of the clavicle now if we can observe here what we can actually see is that not whole of the middle end of the clavicle is in contact with the articular surface of the sternum almost one third of the middle end of the clavicle is actually lying superior to the actual position of the sternoclavicular joint space now this actually happens with the shoulder in the resting position but as the patient starts elevating the shoulder girdle what actually happens is there is elevation and inferior gliding of the middle end of the clavicle and the whole of the middle end of the clavicle actually comes in full contact with the articular surface of the sternum this elevation and inferior gliding of the middle end of the clavicle is again one of the very important shoulder mechanics that physiotherapy students should always remember. So whenever the patient is having difficulty in achieving the end range of the shoulder range of motion, it becomes important to actually assess the gliding and movement of this middle end of the clavicle over the articular surface of the manubrium sterni. So now based on this information, we can conclude that once the finger pad comes in contact with the superior portion of the middle end of the clavicle, the articular space is lying immediately below this. Now how to confirm the exact location of the sternoclavicular joint space? So for this we can do the movement testing. So for this what the therapist is going to do is to place one of the finger in the lateral direction so that it is placed directly below the point where the superior portion of the middle end of the clavicle was felt. Now to confirm that this is actually the sternoclavicular joint space, the therapist can do movement testing. So for this, the ipsilateral side shoulder is going to be held passively directly below the elbow joint and it will be raised into the elevation movement. This elevation and depression of the shoulder girdle will be felt in the form of the inferior gliding of the middle end of the clavicle as well as the middle end of the clavicle again rising up with the depression movement. So as we can appreciate here, the orientation of the sternoclavicular joint space is actually from the superior medial to the inferior lateral direction. So this was about the palpatory skills that are actually required to palpate and localize the sternoclavicular joint. Now utilizing this knowledge we are also going to make few more videos which will cover how a therapist should actually assess the osteokinematics and arthrokinematics that is the motion palpation for the sternoclavicular joint and also some of the treatment strategies based on the mobilization and thirst method. So stay tuned and keep sharing the physio classroom videos. See you all in our next video of the shoulder complex palpation series till then keep learning keep sharing and stay connected